This is Ben Whitehead, the sports editor of the Duncan Banner, here with Velma Alma head coach Greg Gothard. And Coach Gothard, you finish the season undefeated. You you get your district championship, and, and it's, it's just been kind of a, a great year for you. I mean, just talk about the year that it's been and, and how excited you are heading into the playoffs. Yeah, it, it has been. It has been a great year. And I said on radio, I think it's last uh, Saturday. Uh, you know, undefeated seasons don't come easy. Uh, there are not many of those around, and so we're really proud of what we've done. Uh, that was certainly our goal heading into the year. I uh, wasn't sure we can get there or not. We uh, kids come a long way and uh, worked hard. Uh, it's been a been a, a real fun year. You know, uh, uh, just the, the work ethic the kids have put in. Uh, is has been great. Uh, you know, we, uh, like I say, finished finished here. We're we're able to get two playoff games at home, providing we take. You know, we were able to win Friday night, and and uh, so it's always good to be at home. And, and on the third round, if you look that far ahead, we're on the road. But who cares at that point? You know, uh, so we're just taking one game at a time. I think I told you in the, in the paper at some point. Uh, you know, we're just we was excited about getting to play one more Monday and uh, practice one more Monday. And I'll tell you what, Monday's practice was uh, really, really good. And uh, yesterday's practice was better. And uh, so hopefully, you know, because we're just taking it one day at a time. We're not looking uh, any any further than past today. Can't worry about what happened yesterday. We're just looking for today's practice and see what happens. Looking back, you know, at the beginning of the season, you, you open the year with just kind of a crazy night with right. the, the thunderstorms and you got one quarter of football in against Comanche, and and at that point you scored six or scored a touchdown and got six points, and Comanche scored a touchdown and got six points, and then it was just kind of that was it. That was it. <laughs> and and it, you you know no one really knew anything about anybody, right. and now here you are, and you know a whole lot about your team, and, and you know a whole lot about what they can do. Right. Uh, you face Ringling, you beat them. You face Hilton, you beat them. I mean. You find you found out a lot about your team this year. It, it, we we really did. We found out a lot about ourselves that we didn't know. You know, we made a few moves uh, start of the year, and then about a couple of games into it, we made a few more. And I, it seems like all those moves have, have really paid off. Where we feel like we got everybody uh, uh, where they need to be to make us the best. You know, we've got a few kids that, as always, that can play several positions uh, and and do it. <coughs> excuse, excuse me. <laughs> and do it quite well. But what we had to do, what you've got to do as coaches, move those guys around what makes them best for for the whole instead of one or two. And, and I think we've done that. And, and uh, you know, we started the year, we really have put the focus uh, from the beginning on defense and defense only. And I think that's really kind of uh, not the, the, the norm. <laughs> now, you look at the the state scores on how many points people have given up, and we give up, I believe, 63 or 65, somewhere around there. And I believe that's leading the state. And 10 years ago, they wouldn't have been in the top 20, you know, uh, because offensive offenses have evolved so much. And, you know, and I think the mindset, uh, I've heard a few few guys, uh, college, pro, and a few high school, you know, we, it's our job to score more than another opponent. and. When I grew up, it was they don't score, you, you win. You know, seven and nothing ball game was a great ball game. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's not that way anymore. But I, I'm pretty proud of our defense, and and uh, you know, uh, we're still pushing that. We're still going to try to be the best defense we can be. And and uh, uh, we get found out today that Tucker Tops uh, is going to be able to start running today. Uh, Fully released on Monday, but got to ease him back into it. So, you know, what a good good football player and excited to get him back, be a shot in the arm for us. And so we're just going to ease him in, you know, maybe he can get us, you know, five or six, maybe ten plays on, not this week, obviously, but next week and maybe after that it's even more. So uh, another good football player we've been missing that uh, sure makes us better on defense. Well, and at the same time, you, you've been able to put some guys in there that have also been able to produce and, oh, yeah. and giving you, you know, good minutes as well. Yeah, yeah and we feel like that uh, we weren't sure if we was going to get him back or what. We felt like that we could go, as, you know, all the way with what we got. It's just, you know, you got one more now. We got some kids that's got a lot of game experience that we can rest if need be. We can get big in some places, you know. So it's really overall made us better. Getting him back or not getting him back, we're going to be a better football team. 
Well, uh, you're facing the Sayer Eagles, and right. they are one win away from being district champions. Right. They finished the district A3 uh, with a 4-2 and two record in, in the district, and they beat the district champion Carnegie, I think, going into the final week of the season. There were four teams right. with a 4-1 and one record. Right. And they happen to end up being on the losing end of their game in, the, in week 10. And so they end up as number four seed, but very easily could have been the number one seed because yeah. they beat the number yeah. one seed. Yeah, so. there's, there, ben, there's not a, a, any difference in, in any of those guys. In fact, we had our district football being today. And, you know, there's not one football player or football team better than the other over there. It's just that's the way it ended up with Sayre fourth and, and Carnegie one. And, and like I say, fourth place beat the first place. Um, don't see that very often, but they're all pretty equal. And so really, teams in our district from us all the way to Empire, uh, you know, I think there is a little bit of a pecking order in our district, whereas Empire's playing somebody just as good as what we're playing and vice versa. So, uh, you know, I, I feel like we we got a chance to, to do some good things. You know, I, I think, of course, I'm partial to our district. <laughs> Does Sayer uh, remind you of any team that you've played this year, or well, is something different? I think uh, they're probably remind me of us. I mean, they're predominantly I formation, predominantly run, throw the quick passing game. Quarterback throws the ball extremely well. Uh, they've got a couple really good receivers. Uh, one especially uh, that they like to get the ball to. They do some things that puts pressure on your defense. You know, it's kind of a uh, smash mouth, not a lot of finesse. Uh, at least that's not what I've seen on film. Uh, so I, I think we're going to see kind of a mirror of ourselves, and, and uh, hopefully, uh, being at home, hopefully uh, where we're at, we'll, we'll be able to prevail playing that kind of football. And the offensive running game for you guys with Tanner Jenkins and uh, Tyler Smith, Dallin Mercer. You know, you got three kind of horses right there right. that can can do anything for you. Uh, just talk about what, how big they've been for you this year, well, especially stepping in, like you said, with Tucker Dobbs. Being yeah, out. you know, we start the year with uh, Dallin kind of, you know, Tucker kind of took over the fullback job, and, and that was really good because you have a senior and, and was able to rest a sophomore. Uh, and Dallin's as talented as any part we got on the football field, but it was able to ease him into some of their own, move him some other places, and, and, uh, and Tucker goes down, and then, uh, Dallin steps in, really don't miss a beat, and uh, you know, and, and also the emergence of Tyler Smith at tailback. Uh, each week that he carries the ball, he gets a little bit better. You know, it, Tanner has been a great football player for us for four years. I mean, he's just been, and, and the great thing about uh, Tanner, is he don't care what he does. So I put him at tailback, I put him at fullback, doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to be, and he's going to be the best tailback I got, or he's going to be the best fullback I got. It just depends on where I need him. And so we've got an offensive set or two where he's the tailback and Dallas fullback. And I've got an offensive set or two where he's the fullback and Tyler Smith's the tailback. We're able to do that because Tyler has stepped up and we're able to, you know, trust him and rely on him to carry the load in, in some of those situations. So, uh, hey, we've got three or four really good guys. And he, our quarterback, we hadn't really had to run much. We're not going to, but when the time comes, he, he's uh, he's going to be available. I was going to say uh, Dylan Morgan. He he stepped in. I know he he played for you a few years right. ago, and he went off to Hennessy, but he's back now, and uh, he just kind of stepped right in and not not really missed a beat. He, he really has, and and, and uh, he's been really patient. Like I say, he played tailback at NC a year ago. He can play tailback for us right now, and he's hard to catch, hard to handle. But uh, we've got plenty of weapons. Uh, I just need that trigger guy, that, that guy that can keep things going, the coach on the field. And he's really fulfilled that role and, and uh, throws the ball extremely well on the run, which really works in with our offense and stuff. And, and uh, like I say, uh, we've got enough weapons that he's the kind of the ice on the tape or the secret weapon, whatever you want to call it, that uh, you load up on and able to stop those other guys. And I think we've got a kind of ace in the hole or ace upper sleeve or however you want to call it, in, in, in uh, Dylan uh, Morgan. So we're pretty fortunate. Uh, it's interesting uh, being how this offense has evolved this year because uh, we, I, I, and I still have, we're not worried about offense. We're gonna, we, we've got very few plays. 
we're just going to try to do the best we can. We're going to work on defense. Uh, that's the way we have failed. And, and the funny thing is, our offense is, is doing quite well for itself. So uh, we're still, we work probably two and a half or three hours for every hour of work on offense, work on defense, which uh, I don't know. I don't think if we're running a spread offense, you can't do that. Uh, so we're going to keep it pretty simple on offense, try to make sure we line up right on defense, fly with the football. I know uh, the last four or five weeks or so, the the, the level of competition right. hadn't been what you're probably going to see Friday night. Right, absolutely. Ever since that Ringling game, you just kind of kind of going through the motions, I guess. But like you said, you can't just turn it on when you want to. You, you right. have to turn it on from day one. Right. And, and and how how have the guys responded to that? Well, they been they really done well. I mean, I, I think all year long we practice practice hard. We start the year, of course. The season's new. It's it's all in front of you. Uh, excitement, uh, no matter it, it, you know, beginning of the year whether you're end up 0 and 10 or 10 and 0, whatever the case may be, the first week or two of practice is exciting. I mean, because it's the unknown. And so we we got after. We felt like we had a chance to be a, a pretty solid football team, and and we knew we had to work hard and get good pretty early because of the the Winnie Woods, the Ringlands, the Hiltons, uh, the Comanches. Uh, and, and and we did that, and so we you, you push those kids for seven, eight weeks, and so that week after rain wasn't you know we short practice up and it was just kind of relaxed a little bit you know, but we still worked hard. And then each week coming on, we we really was able to pay attention to the minute details, uh, really focus on us. Uh, kids still worked hard, but it just the excitement of Monday when the, when. Monday roll around is just like man, it's a new. Uh, it is just so neat because our kids was hungry. The coaches, you know, we walked, we talked, we acted different. And the thing is, it's kind of like the first day, only better because you kind of knew what you had already. There wasn't a lot of unknowns. It's just you got a chance to go out and really prove where you think you might be. So, so uh, it's like a, a new beginning yeah, of the season like, for yeah, you. Yeah, P12 shot, whatever you'll call me. It. It's just <laughs> like we got revived. We got brought back to life. It's just a little more pep in our staff, a little just to look in the kids' eyes. You know, uh, we wasn't busting on formations that we busted a week ago. That the formations are harder now than they were then. But you know, it's uh, yeah, I'm over there. Yeah, you know, they're us around do, but they're mentally we wasn't in it. So uh, it, it's just neat to see that we still had that in us, and it's just like I say, it's kind of like we were reborn, uh, only better. And so uh, we're excited, and like I say, we're not looking past uh, past today. So what about your senior class? Uh, obviously, having as many kids in the senior class that you do, and, and the majority of them starters, and especially on the defensive side of the football, how big is that for you guys? And, and how do you feel like that's going to play into the playoffs this year? Yeah, I think if if we were a, you know, in which I've been two, three years ago, we had two seniors, uh, you know, four or five juniors, and then this group of ten sophomores. I think we'd have been in. That team at this this year, uh, I think we'd probably struggle. I think we'd struggle this first game in the playoffs. Uh, I don't know that we'd have handled the, the times the last five weeks is the way we've handled it. Uh, you know, but when you've got uh, Tanner Jenkins out there, a Dylan Morgan, a, a Zach Morris, uh, a Dallas Fox, uh, a Tucker Dobbs, uh, you know, just going through there, Sean Wright. You know, them guys, and I'm sure I'm missing some, uh, a couple of them. That's six out of the ten right there that have been in those battles. They, they've seen the ups and downs. They've seen, hey, you need to handle this like this. No different parenting, is it? You know, my, my, my daughter's born in, you know, 88, whatever year it was. You know, heck, we didn't know what to do. The time that second rolls around, you're a little bit wild, you're a little bit smarter because you've been there, done that. Same thing with me as coach. I've been here 26 years in the business, 26. I, I see things coming. I know how to handle. Them. I handle them right. So a lot of a lot of different ways to to. But like I say, just experience of being there. Done. I think uh, just the, the senior leadership's uh, irreplaceable. All righty, Coach. Well, Sayers coming to town Friday night, seven thirty. Good luck to you then. Thank you, man. Appreciate. It.